Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I have a special guest, Natalie Grant, multiple award-winning, all sorts of colors of albums, <laughs> level stuff. Singer, you know her. Natalie, good to have you. Ah, uh, thanks for having me. So we're we're thrilled to have you, and we just got to hear some great stuff uh, in the studio, yeah. which you can probably find online somewhere. Um, <laughs> And, and that's all great, but there's a whole other side of you that people mm. may or may not know, <laughs> and that's another passion besides music. Tell it is. us about that. You know, um, goodness, a little over 10 years ago now, um, I was watching an episode of Law & Order. It was my favorite TV show, and I never thought I'd say Law & Order changed my life, <laughs> but it turns out it did, and I think a lesson for me is that God is always speaking it's just, are we always listening? And that particular night, they did an episode on something called human trafficking, and the episode was in 2004. So now, 12 years ago, I had never even heard the term human trafficking. And they were depicting these children being sold in New York City. I'm thinking, what? They always say law and order is ripped from the headlines. Oh, yeah. What headline is that from? Right. And I can't explain it other than just the prompting of the Holy Spirit, but... I began to, I literally went to Google and Googled what is human trafficking. And there in my family room is where I learned for the first time that slavery still exists. Mm -hmm. As we've, so many of us have now heard more slaves in our world today than at any other point in our history. The numbers are staggering, so overwhelming that you can't even really digest it. And um, that TV show led to three months later, uh, me going on a trip to India. My husband and I stood in the red light district and I saw, uh, she couldn't have been more than six years of age, a little girl in a cage. Um, we toured a brothel because they thought my husband was a potential customer mm. and saw just things I can't even um, begin to describe, the, the evilest of the evil. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I'd been doing music for, at this point, um, for several years. And even though you're in Christian music, you're still, you're, you're working to establish yourself and to get your songs out there and to get on radio. And even though you, you always want to say it's, it's all for the Lord and it's all for ministry, you know, in an honest moment, it wasn't. I was driven by things that had nothing to do with that. And I can't explain it except for that in a moment, in the middle of that street in Mumbai, I had a real, like, epiphany moment of, okay, <laughs> first of all, you've been given a platform for something so much greater than yourself, and you've been given it not so that you can make a name for yourself, but so that you can awaken to what it means to live out the Great Commission and to serve the least of these. True religion, what does that look like? Yeah. And um, that's really the moment that my life began to change. So what do you what do you do? What do you do about it? <laughs> well, at first, I remember coming home, and, and I, I went with an organization that was working in India, and I saw the work they did, and I literally thought, okay, I'm going to come home, and you know, artists, they always have a platform for something. And at this point, I'd just never done it because I hadn't, my heart hadn't connected to anything, and it wasn't that I didn't want to support you know, other organizations. It's just I wanted to, I wanted it to be real and authentic sure. for me. Sure. And um, I thought, okay, I'm going to tell everybody about this because I'm sure most people are like me. They've never heard about this problem. Why aren't people talking about this in the church? Mm -hmm. These are like the most innocent among us yeah. being ravaged day in and day out. And I'm going to tell everybody, and I'm going to raise money for India, and we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. And I had no idea that I'd come home and about... Two weeks later, there would be a news report um, in my hometown in Nashville, where I live, where they had just broken up a brothel with um, 12 girls under the age of 15. In Nashville? One yeah. mile from my front door. You are kidding me. One mile from my front door. And now, all of a sudden, I was like, uh, okay, what, what wait. Part of, what part of town do you live I in? I know, right? right? I'm like, we're like in the safest of the Bible Belt. Right. And I'm thinking this is no longer across the world, this is across the street. And that's when I found out it was happening in America. And you know, isn't it, isn't it so very American of us to think so many of these issues? Yeah, doesn't happen here. No, they're happening, and, and isn't it so, e it's, it's a fascinating phenomenon to me that it's easier to give to something when you think it's 
thousands of miles away. That's very true. But when you all of a sudden realize it's in your neighborhood and in your town, you don't even want to know about it because mm. it's just too much to take. And it's been, it's been an interesting journey over the last few years. Um, learning about it in that way, I, I all of a sudden began to realize that I needed to use my platform for, for the issue at large. And I founded an organization um, on a <laughs> wing and a prayer, mm -hmm. having no idea what I was doing, but just knowing that I was being called to it. And um, I had a friend that was helping me, and we you know, got our 501c3 um, status and said, okay, now what? What are we, right, we going to sure, do? Right, We're going right. to tell everybody about it. We're going to find out the people that need help. And what started as that is um, now known as Hope for Justice. We're on three different continents and four different countries with seven different international offices. Our home in Cambodia has rescued over 100 girls just since January this year. So you're doing it. It's, it's been unbelievable to see. Uh, and I say that. Um, with great humility because I just talk about it. I I can hold a microphone, which by the way used to be a hairbrush, <laughs> and it turned into like a microphone. Right. But the heroes are those that are are like on the front lines. And while I do say that anybody, if God's prompting you, even when you don't know, just say yes. Out of obedience, say yes, even when you don't know where it's going to lead. Um, because that's exactly what I did. I didn't know, I just knew that he was calling me to obedience. Yeah. And um, what's amazing is that, you know, now this has kind of become a real trendy topic, right? A trendy issue. Yeah, yes. I mean that with, um, it, with gratefulness, that when things become trendy, yeah. stuff happens and things right. get done. And it was, you know, remember when nobody would talk about AIDS in the church, it was like, oh, we can't talk about AIDS. Mm -hmm. Then everybody started talking about AIDS and then stuff got done. And then clean water and digging wells. Mm -hmm. And now it's moved on to human trafficking. And that's just kind of the way culture works. They go from cause to cause. But prayerfully, there's those organizations and there's many that are doing fantastic work. Um, our organization is a part of something called the End It Movement, and there's incredible coalition partners that are a part of that, all doing amazing work. And it shouldn't be just about one. It's all of it takes all of us and then some to be a part of this. And um, people will say that raising awareness, you know, well, what does that do? Awareness without action is. But what's interesting is that because people have started to talk about this issue, raise awareness and let people know that it's happening, um, just a few months ago in Franklin, Tennessee, which is like quintessential, oh, yeah. you know, small town America, like if people come there and it's, you know, it's storybook. Mm -hmm. And uh, local citizens began to notice a business that didn't seem right. And it was actually local citizens who'd become aware of human trafficking really? that ended up calling the police and they were holding three women in the back of a spa and that were being trafficked out really? of that. And it's amazing to me because I'm like, okay, don't tell me awareness isn't working because yeah. it's working. Yeah. And yeah. local citizens are starting to feel like, okay, we, we actually can do something mm. about this. Yeah, great. And you know, I think the, what you kind of outline is, is the mm. story because we can all do something. We yes. can't do everything. Mm -hmm. You you really weren't in a position to go and live in Cambodia on the no. streets and help, <laughs> but there are people who are. Yes. And so they said, yes, Lord, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. You said, yes, Lord, I'll talk about it in, in my concerts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I don't know if I should say this, <laughs> <laughs> but I know a dirty little secret about the business and mm -hmm. that a lot of artists can get paid money Yes, to talk about causes at So that's concerts. what I was going to say earlier okay. when I said the reason I didn't sign up for any of those is because it just felt this is wrong. But this is not the case <laughs> with you. And I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that there aren't arrangements that are, they shouldn't do. Right. I, I, I'm okay with a lot right. of that. But what I'm saying is that you're doing yeah. this because it's on your heart. <laughs> yeah, I don't get paid. I'm not on staff. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but there's some people that can't do either of that. They, right. they don't have a platform. Right. They can't leave their families and go, but they can support. Yes. And they can talk about it. They can learn the signs. Everybody so can do happens. something. And I think that's such a good point yeah. because I think with an issue like this, number one, the numbers are so staggering. Twenty-seven. Now they're actually saying over 30 million. It's the fastest growing criminal activity in the world. Um, even drug lords are turning to trafficking because a drug, it's a supply and demand. You can, you have to replenish your stock when it comes to drugs or arms. Yeah. Um, but a person you can sell over and over and over again. It's so horrific to think about, but that's why it's growing so quickly. And it's, 
it's also so hard to digest that there's there's a demand. You, can, yeah. you, you can't, yeah, it, but I'll never forget when I very first started talking about this, um, I went to a church, I was doing a Christmas concert, and before I took the stage, the pastor asked if he could um, sit down and talk with me. And I said, oh, of course, you know. He said, hey, I, I know you're all about that child sl slave thing, but uh, we really brought you here to sing about like warm, fuzzy, hot cocoa, Christmas songs everybody loves. Yeah. We really don't want you to talk about that tonight because mm -hmm. that just doesn't really fit into people's like Christmas. Right. And I mean, I like was like, Lord, help me now, because I was no, about that was probably unleashed. the worst thing you could have oh, said to you oh, oh. to not. And <laughs> then when I started saying, okay, you've got to be kidding me, you know, this is, I'm so sorry, but no, this is what I've been called to do, and I'm going to talk about it. And I said, listen, I'll respect you because you're the pastor of this church, and I'm going to respect what you've asked. Um, and, and it was just, it's been an, edu it's been a process of getting people comfortable and realizing that th the church is the very place. We should be talking Absolutely. about the most innocent among us who are having the most unthinkable things done to them day in and day out. And um, this is the place where we yeah. should be talking yeah, the, about the it. the place where he came to set the captives free. And it's been incredible to amazing. see people open up and begin to embrace this issue. Mm -hmm. And when we were in India, um, my husband, because just even in India, there were so many millions of trafficking victims. Mm -hmm. And he said, how did, my husband said um, to the gentleman that was in charge of, of um, the restoration home there, he said, how do you do this every day? Like every day you wake up and you know that as soon as you get one, all it's done is create a vacancy mm -hmm. for another one to come in. How do you do this every day? And he said, we look at the millions upon millions and we think, oh, how could, I'm, what I'm doing doesn't even make a difference. But he sees millions and millions of individuals and I just help the ones he sends. Yeah. And I just loved that, that if we look at trying to conquer the entire problem, mm -hmm. yeah. all of us will be defeated. But if we can look at just helping the one, doing the one thing that we can do, writing a letter to your senator saying we need stricter laws and, and better ways to help victims in the United States, or if it's having a, car wash, so many um, young, this, this generation is all about just social justice, yeah. which has been incredible to see them grab a hold of this mm -hmm. and do whatever they can to help. The point is all of us can do something. If someone wants to do something with your organization, what's the <laughs> website where they can it's find out It's hopeforjustice.org. Great, so, great. I'd love for you to learn more. Oh, I'd <laughs> love for you to check it out because there's something you can do and it's just about doing something. Mm -hmm. So check out hopeforjustice.org. And I want to let you know you can see more of Natalie Grant when she's on Life Today. I encourage you to check that out. You can see that online right now at lifetoday.org. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button because we want to let you know about all the great videos from Life Today.